The 2023-24 men's basketball season tips off today, and with that new year brings new yearnings. The Wolfpack wish for a return trip to the tourney, while the Citadel dares to dream of a dance they haven't yet marched in. Hello, everybody. We welcome you courtside here at PNC Arena. I'm Andrew Sanders alongside NC State legend Scott Wood. Thanks for joining us here. Season opener, Scott, a lot of excitement in the building. Yeah, I'm excited. Fall's in the air. I've enjoyed football, but it's basketball time now. Uh, no doubt about it. Hey, DJ Burns became quickly a fan favorite here in Raleigh last season, and he is back. Big man in the middle. One of the things that we need to see is how Coach Conroy are going to, you know, attack him, especially on the offensive end. Are they going to trap, switch it up to zone? So I'll be interested to see how they uh, handle him tonight. NC State brings eight newcomers along with DJ Burns. Seven of them transfers. Five of them we'll see tonight. A lot of talent. Yeah, all of them come from a high major Division I school. All of them played a lot of minutes last year. So I got to see how they'll mesh tonight. NC State and the Citadel. Third straight ACC opponent in a season opener for the Bulldogs. They beat Pitt a couple of years ago in the season opener. Lost at Clemson last year. They're in the infantry blue. NC State in the home white uniforms. It'll be one of the transfers. Mohamed Diaro tips it up and wins the mistimed tips. Away we go on the 2023-24 season. First possession to the Wolfpack. Couple of transfers. DJ Horn, Jaden Taylor play catch. This is Casey Morsell, one of the familiar faces. And the first touch for DJ Burns. The crowd lets you know it. Nearly a turnover. Seven is shoot for Taylor. And there's Burns with a recycle offensively. Going to work. And that first possession, it looked like they were trying to trap from the baseline. Obviously, he got deflected on a pass, but it looks like early on, that's one of the things that they're going to do is really try to trap DJ. Here's the starting five for the Citadel. They added quite a bit of size in Winston Hill and Quentin Melora Brown. A couple of transfers. Melora Brown coming from Vanderbilt. And a backdoor cut and a layup for Durr. Take a look at the Wolfpack starting five here in the season opener for Coach Keats. It is three transfers along with Morcell and Burns. Yeah, he's got that free throw line jumper in his bag. And they're going to have to find a way to contain him. If they let him get going, it's going to be a rough night for him. So a couple of quick baskets for DJ Burns this season, barely a minute into it. Here's Melora Brown. A.J. Smith, physical guard, goes into attack mode. Corner three won't fall. And that's one of the things that they'll have to do, attack him in the pick and roll, made a good pass, just missed the corner jump shot. Oh, that baseline spin move is too good. Great touch, great touch, great hands, great footwork. Burns has all six early for the Wolfpack. Durr able to drive around Morsell all the way to the basket. No help defense. Yeah, Durr and Elijah Morgan, both really good guards. You know, Durr was the, on the freshman all-conference team last year, so he's had big minutes. He's one of the guys that we're going to have to stop tonight for sure. Taylor lost his balance, lost the basketball. Loose dribble from Melora Brown. I don't know if Coach Conroy wants him dribbling out there too often. Tough shot. Won't go for Winston Hill. And that's one of the ones, Casey Morcell is such a good on-ball defender that you, you know, unless you're just an elite offensive player that you don't want to try and take him one-on-one -on -one too much. Tough shot for Cell, way off. And an offensive rebound. As NC State fans get acquainted with Mohamed Diora, that's something he can bring to this team. And that's one of the things, especially seeing him in the practice and shoot around, really high motor. And that's one of the things that NC State's going to need out of him. And it seems like he can do just a little bit of everything. And he draws the start here in the opener. Hill backing him down. Can't finish, and a chance maybe to push here for Horn. Three on two. 
deep three. And that's what they want to do. They really want to push the ball, get out in transition, get those open threes. And that's a good job by them. They didn't get the first one, but attacked one more time, made the extra pass, and got a good look. This will be a kick ball. Kevin Keats, now in his seventh season with the Wolfpack, took him to the big dance last year. And looking to get him back, you see they have been dominant against non-conference opponents at home. With so many new faces, it's a lot to juggle as a coach. He did it well last season. It is, and that's just kind of the landscape of college basketball today. I think Citadel's going through it too. Yeah. You know, especially early on, how are these guys going to mesh? I think this is something that the coaches want to see, especially being one of the first games of the year. Michael O'Connell, Ben Middlebrooks have both checked in for NC State. A couple more transfers from Power 5 programs. Late in the shot clock, and a steal from Horn. O'Connell with a fast break bucket, his first in an NC State uniform. That's just good defense. Diara down there on the baseline. He kicks it out. Way to keep your man in front. Attack in transition and get the easy layup. The defense leading to offense. NC State hoping its defense can be improved this year with added size and athleticism. And right on cue, nearly a steal from Taylor. Hill finds the shooter. That's Elijah Morgan from that left wing. And they've missed a couple good ones. I think that's what coach probably wants them to get. They're getting good looks, especially from those corners off of the pen dribble penetration. So that's something that they're going to take all night. NC State out to a 10-4 lead at the first media break. Michael O'Connell in transition. Defense to offense. This is exactly how they want to play. Green to stop, getting a layup. Welcome you back here in Raleigh alongside Scott Wood. I'm Andrew Sanders. NC State leads it 10 to 4 early. Take a look at last year's recap. 23 wins overall, 12 of them in ACC play. Scott, what was it about last year's team that made them so good? You know, I think a lot of it, they had two all ACC type players. They had Terquavion Smith and Jarkel Joyner, who was a great leader for them, and now they're missing them. You see 15 and 2 here in this building. A couple of dynamic guards and a lot to replace. DJ Horn, who gets that inbound and has the ball now, he's one of the guys they brought in to try and fill that. And one of the reasons he told me that he came here to Raleigh is Jaden Taylor is off with the three. And another recycle. NC State up 7-2 to two in the rebounding battle so far. And the Citadel did a really good job on that baseline out of bounds there. Especially in the exhibition, NC State was able to get some easy ones off that, and they, just, they uh, defended it really well. Well, the three off the mark for Horn, but... Getting back to that, one of the reasons he wanted to come to NC State's style of play, and he knew that there were a lot of shots to be had and a lot of points that needed to be replacing, and he'd like to do some of it. Yeah, they're going to need some guys to fill that void, uh, especially taking guys off the bounce. That's one of the things that I'm interested in seeing is that. Cam Roberts just into the game. He gets an and one opportunity as he is fouled by Dennis Parker, the lone freshman for NC State. And Cam Roberts is one of those that, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing, especially in their exhibition. Got some good minutes as a freshman. You know, talking with Coach earlier, he wants to see what they have early on. Uh, and he has a really high motor, especially uh, after what we just saw. And he gets his own offensive rebound. And another rebound off a tip from Melora Brown. Roberts, who's from South Boston, Virginia, but making kind of a homecoming. He played AAU ball for Garner Road here in Raleigh. Yeah, really good connection. The David West connection, as well as TJ Warren ball playing there. Jaden Taylor, the Butler transfer, finds Dennis Parker. And you see he is bouncy. He follows up his own miss. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Look, watching NC State in practice, he is going to be awfully good. He's really, really athletic. Uh, I think I saw some clips of him dunking the basketball. That's one thing he is really athletic. He's also a little bit more smooth and skilled than probably people really expect. But very highly talented recruit, and would be interested to see his career here. Freshman from Richmond, Virginia, rolls in his first collegiate point. 
the Virginia Player of the Year, but I think the most important thing, that three-time state champion, probably would have been four times, but they didn't play the championship due to COVID. So he comes from a winning program, he knows how to win, and he's looking to bring some of that to NC State. And that's something a lot of coaches are looking at, guys that have the winning history, because there is an art to winning, uh, and it's not easy. NC State pressing full court, and the Citadel turn it over. O'Connell at three. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to pressure you, and the Citadel has to handle that pressure a little bit better than what they have early on. They had only six turnovers in their exhibition against Newberry College, but the amount of pressure has been turned up here. A little bit more athleticism, a little bit more size and length, uh, but I think, you know, especially after they see it a few times, they'll start to handle a little bit better as the game goes on. Last touch by O'Connell as he was pressuring Elijah Morgan, the Notre Dame transfer, second year in Charleston with the Bulldogs. And he was their leading scorer in that aforementioned exhibition against Newberry College. He had 18. Here's Keenan Davis. Trying to find an outlet off of Roberts. That's where you got to come back to the ball. They kind of left him hanging there in the corner. You got to back cut, come to the ball, help him out. We talk about what NC State is replacing, right? And it's awfully tough to replace the scoring ability of Terquavion Smith or that, that fifth-year veteran guard leadership from Jarkel Joyner. But, but one thing that they maybe did in bringing in so many new guys is they brought in some vets and also some length and athleticism. You think they could be better defensively? Yeah, and I think that's one of the things. I think they're a little bit deeper this year. I think they can go 11 guys, especially the style of play Kevin Keats wants. He wants to pressure. He wants to do it. You know, for a three-quarter of a game, every once in a while, come back into his half-court half defense. But he really wants to pressure, and he can get, get guys now in and out and know when they need a break, he's got somebody he can bring in. Citadel love to post up their guards if they can. Nearly another steal. Hill now. Oh, sloppy. Maybe got away with the travel. And it's going to be a shot clock violation before the tie-up. And you can see that length and pressure of NC State really bothering the Bulldogs early. Yeah, and that's one of the things that he's talked about. He's trying to implement that defensive scheme since he's been there and having the right pieces in place and having a deeper roster. And this is one of those years that he's really going to be able to implement that. Great to talk to Ed Conroy, the head coach listed as his second season, but as you see, he was also the head coach from 06 to 2010, and it's a homecoming for him. There's a lot of tie-ins between NC State and the Citadel, but catching up with him, when we went to talk with him, he was talking to an NC State legend, Chris Corciani, because he actually coached Mr. Corciani uh, back in his senior year under Les Robinson. So he was an assistant at NC State here from 1990 to 1993. So first thing we said to him was, hey, coach, welcome back. Well, first off, welcome back. And it's got to be easy, I would imagine, to be able to coach a Rodney Monroe and Chris Young. So things were probably a little bit easier on him than what he's got to go through tonight. You know, afterwards, and uh, obviously we know Corciani pretty well. I asked him, I said, hey, what was it like to be coached by Coach Conroy? He said, you know, back then he was he was 24 years old, so you know he kind of fit in well because he was he was basically our age also, but he immediately earned our respect. Uh, just a great coach and a great person, and uh, they were able to catch up. And State's making them start their offense so far out. They really got to try to start this in a scoring position right at the three-point line. And again, the pressure gets to them. Fourth turnover for the Bulldogs. It'll take us to the under 12 timeout. 12 6, we'll bet. Let's take a look at this Bulldogs team. And yeah, 13 of the 16 players are underclassmen. It's the young pumps, including seven freshmen. And Scott, you discussed this just a little bit earlier, but. Coach Conroy is going to play a lot of guys in his rotation early in the season in non-conference to kind of find out what he has with all these freshmen. Yeah, and I think he really likes his freshman class. Um, they've got a mixture of some really good sophomores that had some really good minutes for them last year, and I think they sprinkled in those graduate seniors. So they've got some leadership there, and I think especially as the season goes on, they're going to get really good. Madison Durr back in for Coach Conroy. He picks up O'Connell. DJ Burns back in, a left elbow catch, and Breon Pass gets his first minutes 
of this season. Tend to shoot for NC State. That's a, that's a better defensive kind of play for them. They, they forced the catch out almost by the three-point line and made DJ really have to back it in. Those are the things that they need to do. Hill backing down DR on that left block. You see the length of DR forcing a tough shot. that are going to be winning plays for them. I think especially with them being a little deeper and missing Terquadion and Jarkel, that's the style of basketball they're going to have to have. Really get a paint touch, make the right play. Pass got his hand in there. Malora Brown able to regather. I was giving Scott a hard time during the break. Both teams have been 0 for 3 from deep. O'Connell was able to save us on that. It was. It was a rough little stretch, but, you know, we broke the ice now. I don't think anybody's made more threes in this building than you as Durr makes the turnaround. Good player, in control, kind of backs him down a little bit and creates space with a fadeaway. Really good player. I like his game. Burns. Boy, he is such a unique player. He's got a good pep in his step right now. I will say that. You know, he's hard one. He's just, he's tough to guard. Do you go zone? Do you trap? And I don't know if anybody's really figured out the answer to really contain him. Even going back to last year. Foul before the shot. Well, he's got such a great personality and a great game to go along with it. And uh, immediately the fans in Raleigh embraced him. And I asked him, I said, you know, did, did you ever expect when you came here that anything like this could happen? He was like, no. I mean, it was, you have to remember that Dushan Mahorchic got injured and that really led to an increase of minutes for him where he was thrust into a role. He wasn't expecting to play 30 plus minutes. Uh, but when he did, he was even better in ACC play when he got his opportunities. Yeah, and especially early on last year, they kind of tried to protect him. And then when Dushan did go down, he was thrown into a role and he really thrived at it. And I think he just kind of bought into the crowd loving him. And now, like you said, just a huge fan favorite. And a blocking foul away from the ball as Burns ends up on Melora Brown. And Burns in the first 10 games of the season, he played 16 and a half minutes. That was his average, but after the Mahorchic injury, the last 24 games, over 25 minutes his average. And as you can see, one of the better shooters in the ACC. And again, that's where I would probably tell DJ, try to catch a little bit lower. He's notorious for kind of backing him down from the three-point line, but especially all these types of defense he's going to see this year, it makes it a little bit easier to dig, trap, and get the ball out of his hands starting from the three-point line. Taylor with the three, way too strong. I think we're seeing a little bit of those jitters, especially a lot of newcomers in the game today. They really want to play well their first time. Just I think they got to kind of take that deep breath, take your time a little bit, and trust that everything you worked on this summer is going to take care of itself. Ten to shoot for Melora Brown. Good inside out game. No three, but. A foul on Taylor for NC State. The offensive rebound to A.J. Smith. You had a nice freshman year. You played a lot. How long do you think it, it felt it took you to settle in? I think everybody's a little bit different. Um, I think they're excited to play and see new faces. I think that was the first thing that I remember is just getting worn out by my teammates every single day in practice. But you want to see something new. But it is, it's, it's different. It's a different speed, different physicality. So it's going to take a few games for them to get used to for sure. That is, of course, the story for a lot of teams across the country. Smith. It's really good defense by DJ Horn, and I know that's one of the things that we don't talk to, talk about him a lot. He's known for scoring, but really good defensive possession by him. Citadel will look to push it when they can. Diara hauls in his sixth rebound already, and he's fouled by Smith. That's why they brought him in here. Hard work, rebound, 
give DJ some good spells, especially if we, you know, if we, if they, sorry, play against another big that's a little bit more athletic, gives him a little bit better matchup. We've been able to see the Citadel get out in transition. A good defensive possession, and anytime you get one of those and you're able to get out, usually results in something good. Yeah, both teams obviously struggling to score right now in the half court. They would love to get out and push pace, and a turnover allows that. I think they're just trying to get a feel for each other. I think both coaches mentioned they want to get substitutions early, get everybody some minutes, and that's kind of what we're seeing, just nerves and also getting used to one another in the game. Completes the three-point play. By the way, that's the second foul on Jaden Taylor. He will stay in. O'Connell earns the wolf back an extra possession. Taylor's unselfish. Horn a spot up three. And that's all O'Connell right there. That's the, the hard work, not giving up on the play. Even though the other team gets a rebound, just tipping it in the back and giving your team another possession. Yeah, he could be a crucial player for NC State this and I, season as a pass first point guard. I really like his game. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes. I think that's one of the things that they need. A good floor general and a great pass from DJ Steele at the top. <laughs> NC State starting to get out in transition and create some havoc. DJ Burns with the steal and the dish. It's not every day you get to see the big fella throw a dime like this. In between two guys to Jaden Taylor, Taylor running and finishing on the other end. Michael O'Connell right here. Kids watching, this is how you get minutes. Gets the steal, creates. Gets the ball to Jaden Taylor. We make an extra pass. DJ Horn knocks it down. These are the type of things, especially as a newcomer, that you got to do to earn your minutes. O'Connell already with five points, a rebound, and that steal you just saw. Speaking of steals, DJ Burns with a steal that led to the Taylor free throw that's coming up. You see Michael O'Connell, he graduated from Stanford. That's impressive enough, Scott. He did it in three years. He's got two years of eligibility here at NC State. And if that wasn't impressive enough academically, he was a top 100 recruit, both in basketball, obviously, but also in lacrosse. Well, and that's probably why defensively he brings that physicality. He's not afraid of contact. So. I'm really interested to see him, especially throughout the year, because I think he does. He brings this team a different element. He's not going to wow you, but he plays the game the right way. Three ball, baked in. Keenan Davis, the freshman. They still count. They all count. <laughs> Take all three of them, youngin. And that one is his first collegiate bucket. Counts for a little more in the memory bank. For sure. I hate to tell you, I don't remember my first <laughs> DJ Burns, five for five from the floor. He's done it a bunch of different ways. With his jump shot, he's made a floater. He's backed it all the way down. He's just a handful of guard. Scott, you made too many of them to remember your first one. You had 334 in your career. I remember, actually, the funny thing is I remember my preseason game, but I do not remember my first game. Keenan Davis, we'll see if he remembers this one in, in 10 years or so. I mean, right off the corner of the square, just like he was meaning to do. And it was good defense. It was really good defense. A dig, contest, and he knocked it down. Keenan Davis, one of the freshmen that they're excited about from Chicago. Coach Conroy says he's the Swiss Army knife on the court. And one of the things that he can do, and it's out of many, is shoot it well from deep. He played the most minutes of anyone off the bench in their exhibition against Newberry College. He played 25 minutes and had eight points in that contest. One more. 
DJ Burns picking up that foul, his first. That's a storyline as well, right? NC State would like to keep him on the court. Obviously, to do so, he has to limit his fouls. And Coach keeps saying it. that one coming off the penetration, right? Coach keeps saying a lot of times it's up to the guards to prevent him from fouling. They have to limit guard penetration. Yeah, it definitely goes hand in hand. Now, I always blame the big guy, but you also got to keep the guy in front. But it also is where he needs to be smart. He needs to understand how important he is to the team and try not to get your second foul in the first half. O'Connell, nice find to Horn. Nice back cut by DJ Horn, and I think that's one of the reasons he scores many different ways. He could shoot the three. There you see him cutting for a basket. Many facets to his offensive game. Attack, defender falls asleep, finish at the rim. The assist to O'Connell. Horn, he can really score it. He was second on the team at Arizona State last year, 12 and a half points per game. He was even better uh, in their NCAA tournament run. A couple years at Illinois State before going out to Arizona State. Now in his fifth and final year, he's back home in Raleigh. I'm sure he has a big fan section today. Yeah, the homecoming, a long time coming. And big block by Dennis Parker. My goodness. We talked about the athleticism, and there he is. We, they get beat on, you know, the penetration. He comes across and eliminates it. That's what, exactly what they want him to do. I mean, you talk about help defense. That's a different atmosphere up there. Smith on the pull up. Nice shot. I think that's where Coach Keats, if, if we went back to that, that's a Middlebrooks DR screen. They should probably switch that. Middlebrooks, the Clemson transfer, hands off. Parker, spin move. Showing out on both ends. I was always a big believer. If you make a really good defensive play, you should be able to score it on the, net, on the other end. And he gets the deflection. It's not going to result in a turnover, but that's something this NC State coaching staff, Coach Keats, they aim for 40 deflections. That's been a mainstay since he got here to Raleigh seven years ago. Yeah, and if you go to their practice, it's one of the things that are on the board. Every time they go through a drill or they're scrimmaging, they mark it down every deflection they get and try to you know, utilize that when they go back and watch game film. So the Bulldogs have to face the NC State full court pressure, and they need a timeout to do so. The Wolfpack lead it by 10. Quick timeout by the Bulldogs facing NC State pressure. This Wolfpack team is knocked down five for its last five. The offense is starting to come, and, and it's a little easier when you're getting it done on the defensive end. Yeah, and I always said that offense starts from the defensive end. They're getting in a stance, they're making it tough on the Citadel, and they're getting out and running. Exactly the things that they want to do, and it translates. You get easier looks, because now you're out in transition, they're cross-matched, and you get the buckets. Offense starts from the defensive end. In your case, your range basically extended to the defensive end, right? The other side of the Just court? Just run from three-point line to three-point line. It's, it's easy for me. They, did, they didn't expect me to guard either. Back out, Davis, 12 to shoot. Tries to drive Parker. Oh, a cold three. Boy, Madison Durr has played well so far tonight. Good defense, better offense. He leads the Citadel with nine points, trailing only DJ Burns who has 10 already. Diara. Now he can hit that shot, not that time. That's a shot he can definitely make. I don't know if they want him taking it that early in the shot clock, but he can definitely knock it down. 
Bulldogs in attack mode. A.J. Smith will go to the line when we come back. The Bulldogs cutting into the NC State lead, 28-21. A.J. Smith going to the line here to shoot two. Madison Durr leading them with nine points already. And hey, new number, who's this? Madison Durr wore number 11 last year. He's in the number three uniform this season, but he's the same guy that had a great freshman season, also con freshman team. You see he played very well against Clemson in his season opener last year, and more the same here. Yeah, he can score at all three levels. I think last year shot 30% from three. I think that's something that he's going to improve on, especially going into his sophomore year. And, you know, right now between Madison Durr and A.J. Smith, they're really kind of keeping them in the ballgame. He say he can score from all three levels. We saw made a contested three against Dennis Parker, something that stood out to me in the exhibition against Newberry College. He took 13 free throws, Scott. He drew 10 fouls. If you can kind of create shots, we saw NC State, Terquavion Smith and Jarkel Joyner could do that. Sometimes if your shot's not falling, being able to get to the line can be huge. Anytime you can see the ball go in the basket a couple of times, especially when you're struggling is what you want. So the fact that he does get to the line is going to make him an even better three-point shooter, I think. Great pass. And that's what O'Connell can bring. And that's one of the easier baskets DJ Burns has had tonight. Still hasn't missed. He's six for six. Bulldogs four for their last five from the floor. Put it in the hands of Dirt, drive and kick. It's a couple of times now, Morcel. I think he added a little bit of arc to his shot last year. Those last two threes have been pretty flat. Dirt to the rim, and Diara again cleaning the glass. And this is the type of game NC State's going to want to play. I think the Citadel's got to slow it down a little bit and kind of control the pace. Be a little bit more selective of when they get out in transition. Jump ball as Morcell got his hands on it. Possession arrow favoring the Citadel. Yeah, talking to Coach Conroy, he said, you know, we'd like to be aggressive and we have numbers. We'd like to push, but we do not want to get into a complete up and down game with NC State. You just got to be a little bit selective. I, I really like the idea of getting out in transition because it, it is. It's an opportunity for you to get some easy looks. But you also got to know if you miss one, you're not going to have numbers going back the other way. And that's something NC State likes to do. Well, they break the pressure, a little miscommunication. Oh, and it falls in. Roberts with the friendly bounce. Again, he's played in Raleigh before. He's got four. on the ball, O'Connell hoist up a three. Boy, he struggled in the exhibition against Mount Olive. He had five turnovers, but he played very well in their scrimmage against Georgia, and this is more reminiscent of that. The big lights come on and everybody plays better. That's, that's how it's <laughs> supposed to work. That's a good job by DJ just staying down. He's got to understand foul trouble is the one thing that's going to keep him on the sidelines, so make sure you stay down. I even think he can do a better job of squaring up and maybe not hit him with the hip, but no call, so he's okay. O'Connell's got eight points to go along with a couple rebounds and a couple of assists and a steal. Two of those at Vanderbilt, maybe not the ideal shot the coach is looking for. Oh, Burns, kick out. The fans wanted him to take a three, and I'll let you in on a secret. He told me in the preseason, he said, you know, I didn't shoot any threes last year. I'm going to shoot some this year. He said, don't, don't worry, not too many, maybe like 10. 
I might have to run that by the coaching staff. Uh, I think his preferred location is in the paint, but maybe he has, you know, developed that over the over the summer. But if he could just Davis deep three, try to bank another one in. If he can, yeah, he's not a bad free throw shooter, right? Got good touch, catch and shoot. O'Connell feeling it. And the double figures with 11. Another great pass. They do a good job on the defensive end. They push it a little bit. They're not matched on the defensive end. Able to get a good open three. Talking to the NC State staff is O'Connell will be called for a block here. Because they have depth. They say, look, you know, we might have a different leading scorer every night, and that's fine. It seems like outside of Burns, it might be O'Connell's night. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that make teams dangerous. It's hard to scout when you have anybody at any time that could lead you in scoring. So I think that would be a perfect formula for them because it makes it a little bit harder to guard. Burns with 12, O'Connell with 11. A little 6 0 spurt for the Wolfpack. As O'Connell with his second foul will come out, replaced by Breon Pass. Pass skies for the rebound now in his junior season. The junior guard from Reedsville averaged just about eight minutes per game last season. He played well in the exhibition with nine points. And he'll be a good change of pace for them. I yeah. think he's a little bit different pace than O'Connell and even Horn, so he'll change change the pace really well for them. Parker to the rack. Great move. You just got to finish that. Shot clock turned off. The Bulldogs can have the last shot if they want it. Morgan, tough pull up. Laura Brown at the horn, got it to go. So an offensive rebound, and the Bulldogs in the half on a high note. But NC State up nine at the half behind double figures from DJ Burns and Michael O'Connell. Basketball is back. And here in Raleigh, NC State leading the Citadel 36-27 at halftime. The team making their way back out on the court will step aside when we come back. Highlights, stats, and the second half next. City of Oaks back inside PNC Arena. And we welcome you back courtside, everybody. Alongside Scott Wood, I'm Andrew Sanders. So glad you could join us here on opening day. Feels like Christmas Day, I know, for you, Scott, as an Indiana guy. The basketball is back. Your thoughts on the first half we saw from NC State in the Citadel? You know, I think, obviously, DJ Burns was our main segment. Just being able to contain him a little bit better, as well as handling the pressure. You know, seven turnovers for the Citadel. So finding a way to handle that. And then as well, we got to get Madison Durr the ball. He's scoring for him. Let him start to create and be the main playmaker. And Durr had nine points, and we'll show you some of his highlights here momentarily. But first, DJ Burns. Well, he was flat out perfect in the first half. Burns, 12 points on six of six shooting. Big fella, you don't see him start to transition much, but he starts it with a pass, getting offensive rebounds, getting to his right shoulder jump hook. 
And you see him putting that move on Quentin Malora Brown. Keep in mind, he's an SEC guy. He came from Vanderbilt. And Michael O'Connell coming from Stanford had a great first half, did a little bit of everything. And that's one of the things that I knew he was going to bring. He's going to bring that work ethic, hard nosed defensive end, but he's also creating on the offensive end, which is something that they're going to need. All right, as we told you, Madison Durr highlights, and yes, there's a few of them. You told me he can score from all three levels. There you see it, kind of the turnaround fadeaway. He gets all the way to the rim right here. Also knocked down a three. He can do a lot of things, and they're going to need a little bit more out of him out of, in the second half. Yeah, really impressive there, contested three, and he can be that guy that they go to if they need it late in the shot clock like that. All right, let's take a look at the first half stats. Early on, both teams were struggling to shoot the ball, pick that up a bit. NC State finishing at 45%. Uh, i tell you what stands out to me, Scott. Just two assists for the Bulldogs. They need to, to share the sugar a little more, as Chris Corciani would say. They definitely do. I think, you know, the pressure of NC State has just given them a little bit too much of trouble. I think one of the things, especially when you're getting pressured, you got to trust your teammates more. And I'm sure that's something that their coaches talked about during the half. We saw the first half end with the Melora Brown offensive rebound and scoring his first basket. That's something the Bulldogs did well. Six offensive rebounds. They actually out-rebounded NC State in the first half, 20 to 19. And that's one of the things in my notes, too, especially in that exhibition. I think State ended up giving up 15 offensive rebounds, so it's one of those things that they kind of struggled in the exhibition and got to do a better job on the defensive glass. NC State starting the second half as they did the first half. Same thing with the Citadel. Double comes, Burns passes out. And that's one of the hard things about him is even when you do come and double team, he's a willing passer. First possession of the second half for the Bulldogs and Hill throws it off of Diara's foot. Shot clock will reset to 20 here. And Malira, Malira Brown had a good seal inside, and I think one of the things, especially after watching that, they're going to try and target him, especially with DJ getting on a little bit of foul trouble. Nearly a steal by Diara. Oh, active hands from Jaden Taylor. And eventually turns into a turnover. Blocking foul. Elijah Morgan with the infraction. Jaden Taylor from Indianapolis. He played his first couple years at Butler. They played NC State in the battle for Atlantis last year. And he told me that going up against the Wolfpack was eye-opening for him. Just the style that they played, how much fun they had, the first miss for Burns, and just the love they have for one another. He could tell that they were having fun and the chemistry was there. And that was really his first introduction to NC State. And so when he eventually went in the portal, uh, he had that as a school that he was interested in because he had seen it firsthand up close in person. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things with the transfer portal is you're seeing a lot of kids that played against other teams. They get to see their style of play, see how the coach is, and then when they realize maybe they're not in the best fit, you know, it kind of sparks that conversation with some other uh, some other universities. He had 18 points against the Wolfpack in Atlantis, but the Wolfpack won the game. Hill maybe got away with the travel. He got rejected by Diara. Morcel, who scored 14 points to lead the Wolfpack in the exhibition against Mount Olive, did not score in the first half, and that's his third turnover. The fifth-year senior has struggled early on. The one thing he can bring is on this defensive end. Smith contested three short, and whistling a foul on Morcel. And that's one of the things, Casey may be kind of pushing it a little bit more than what he needs to, but, you know, as we've kind of mentioned, defensively he's always going to be there so even if he's not knocking down shots there's always a spot for him on the court because he's such an elite on ball defender hill in the paint nice move no finish or 
Marcel had a huge year last year. Made 78 three-pointers. Breakout season for him beyond the arc. Burns 0 for 2 in this half. That'll be something to keep an eye on, Scott. He, he shot right around your percentage, right? 41% from three. And a lot of that was you know, open corner threes with the defense focusing on Terquavion Smith or Jarkel Jordan. Yeah, they're definitely going to lock in on him a little bit more this year. So I'm sure that percentage may come down a little bit. And he's going to also have a couple more opportunities to get the shot up. I've always said the more volume you have, the percentages drop down a little bit. But he's an elite shooter, and he's going to keep shooting the ball. As is Diara. He had missed a couple. Hill dared him to shoot it, and he knocks it down. But Diara limping after making that triple. Obviously in some discomfort. He had fallen down earlier on transition defense, and I'm wondering if that might have kind of sparked it, but he's definitely asking for a sub now. Durr just lost the handle. And Diara is going to go out. And we told you this is a shot that he can hit and you see Hill kind of sizing him up. Diara says, OK, if you're going to give me that, I'll take it. And I, I need a sub, too. Yeah, I was always told if you're injured or don't feel right, don't take the shot. But you know what? It paid off there. You passing up a shot every once in a while. Horn hits the back iron. Smith getting downhill all the way to the rim. And that's what they're going to have to do. You know, they get a good defensive possession. They force a step back three, and then they got to push it. They attack DJ when he was on the free throw line, get downhill, and create the foul. And they called Burns. And that's the kind of foul right there that Coach Keats is telling he can't have. Yeah, you just got to be a little bit smarter. And you also got to understand your importance of the team. You know, they need to have him in the game. And it shouldn't be the reason why he's getting subbed out is because he gets into any kind of foul trouble. And that his third foul. Dennis Parker comes in. So Ben Middlebrooks is going to play the five with Burns saddled with the foul trouble. I think, too, especially when Dusan got hurt last year, they, they were a little bit thin on size. So I think that's why you see Middlebrooks coming in here, Diara coming in here, and DJ, so they, they can get a good mix up. Taylor. Well, he averaged over 12 points per game for Butler, and they played a, a very slow tempo. With NC State's tempo, is Smith again pushing the pace? He'll go to the line. With NC State's tempo, you have to think he'll have a chance to maybe score even more. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things, you know, we've mentioned Jarkel and Chiquavion. They got to find someone that can kind of create off the bounce. You know, you can't just give the ball into DJ every possession and hope that he makes a good pass or play. So they're looking for some of those guys that can really take the ball off the bounce and create. Smith, 11 points. He's having a very quietly good game. And I always said those are the best ones when you score points and you don't really notice it. This is how he's done it. He is now eight of nine from the free throw line. And Citadel shooting just 31%, but hanging around, down nine. Still plenty of basketball left. This is where another freshman, Christian Moore, it looks like checked in the ball game. He's yep. another one that, you know, coach had mentioned that he wants to get some minutes and kind of see what he has uh, coming off that bench. And Christian Moore from all the way out in L.A. Parker has his pocket picked by Morgan. Laura Brown high arc in three. Rainmaker. And I will say one of the things that the Citadel's doing a little bit more is they're being a little bit more aggressive defensively, defensively and it's resulting in them being able to push and get some good shots on the offensive end. But a big answer right back by Jaden Taylor. Timeout, Bulldogs. Citadel with some momentum, but calling a timeout, and here's why. Coming out of 
the three-point basket by Melora Brown. Yeah, they get arguably their best defensive possession. Melora Brown knocks down a three, but then they just don't get back in transition. Uh, they got a match up there, and then a slow closeout. Jaden Taylor knocks it down, and that will get a coach's bud blood boiling. Melora Brown, same spot, contested by Middlebrooks, catches back iron. O'Connell. Boy, nice pass inside. Really good patience, and I think O'Connell could have taken the shot, but he passed up a good one for a great one. And again, that's the scouting report on him. He's going to be unselfish pass first. He finds Middlebrooks his first career in C State basket. Well, he owes him a couple since he gave him his career high uh, last year. <laughs> Yeah, it's not often uh, that you have a career high against the team that you currently play for, but that is the stat for Middle Brooks. This will be the under 16 timeouts. Middle Brooks with the foul. Here's his first bucket in his state career. O'Connell taking his time. Again, passing up a good one for a great one. Back with Scott Wood, I'm Andrew Sanders. A lot of connections between NC State and the Citadel in terms of coaching, but how about in conference? The Citadel joined the SOCON all the way back in 1936, one of the longest serving members. But NC State, not just a founding member of the ACC, Scott, but a founding member of the SOCON. So from 36 to 53, these two were conference mates. And this is the information I like to learn because I wouldn't have known that. I also learned that in a roundabout way, the SOCON is the original super conference. It was loaded yes. back in the day. So maybe one day we can bring back a loaded SOCON. Yeah, out of the SOCON came both the SEC and the ACC, out of the same schools. Yeah, think about the radio deal that they could have gotten back in, in 1921 with that super conference. Yeah, Big Ten who? Jaden Taylor. Tough shot draws front iron, and we have a whistle away from the ball. I believe it's going to be on Hill. It is as he was trying to box out Parker. <laughs> Great effort by Parker. Just attacking the offensive glass. And this is one of the things that I've really been trying to see out of NC State. Offensively, what's it going to look like, especially without two creators in Jarkel and Traquavion? Talking about the Citadel and NC State coaches, Les Robinson went to the Citadel, of course, coached at NC State, where Coach Conroy was his assistant here. Middle Brooks going at Melora Brown. Nice move. Give him two more. Norm Sloan, of course, national championship coach, also coached at the Citadel. Middlebrooks, active hands, pokes it away. This is a really good series for Middlebrooks. And an offensive foul. He spoke too soon. Well, you're new at this, but some people will say that as a commentator, you have a little power. This is the curse of the commentator here. But, you know, it is interesting. With Burns on the bench with foul trouble, and Diora hasn't come back in since he was limping, this is a great opportunity for guys like Parker or Middlebrooks to kind of show what they can do. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that they need to find out, especially if, you know, Burns gets into foul trouble. One, what do we have from the defensive end? But also, you know, you lose a lot offensively. So being able to find something on that end as well. Taylor going to be whistled for the foul here. This will be his third foul. And that's just one of the things, especially when you're trying to pressure the basketball that you're going to give up. But you also got to kind of be a little bit smarter. They're in the bonus, so you don't want to give up free uh, charity stripe shots. Missed it. NC State on the push. It's Horn. That's a blocking foul. They'll shoot two. I'll take it, I'll take it. 
And that's the second time this happens. The Citadel has just been a little bit slow getting back in defensive transition. They've got to find a way to stop the ball and match up, you know, especially on the free throw line. Sometimes you're going to be cross-matched. First and foremost, you have to stop the ball and then match up from behind there. Horn to the line. Got a look at last year. It was a fun season for the Wolfpack, and they were fun to watch, right? Scoring a lot of points, getting out in transition, forcing turnovers. That's what Coach Keats wants them to be year in and year out. Yeah, it's going to be hard to maintain those numbers, but I think they're they're still going to try to stay play the same style. They're going to get, you know, real defensive pressure and get out in transition. So I, I would imagine a lot of those will really stay close. And, you know, turnover margin, it helps when you force a lot of turnovers. They really took care of the basketball well. Speaking of, as Parker turns it over, and then I spoke too soon that time. Right on cue. <laughs> Both teams trading turnovers. But NC State only had three turnovers in the first half. That's already their fourth of the second half. But that would be a trend they would like to see, too. Can they take care of the ball? They've been one of the nation's best the last couple of years. And I think that's one of the things we talked about. The Citadel has been just very much more aggressive on the defensive end, and they're creating some of those turnovers, and it's resulting in good buckets on the other end, like this. The kill wanted a foul to go along with it. We got a timeout called by Coach Conroy. We'll take it with him. Back here in Raleigh, we talked to you about how young the Citadel is. They have, out of their 16 players, 13 are underclassmen. But remember, they opened at Clemson last year. They also played in Chapel Hill against North Carolina. There were, they opened against Pitt and beat them two years ago, although there's nobody on from this squad uh, that was on that squad. But this is a team that, that went through some battles last year against ACC opponents. They get a home game against Boston College next. So this is a, a team that is certainly not phased uh, to come into a big arena like this and play an ACC team. And they're playing well, hanging in there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things that the coach wants to see. He wants to see them play, you know, against ACC schools and really kind of find out what they're about. Great ball movement from NC State. Burns to Horn to O'Connell. Turned down a good one to get a great one. That's the best, that's the best shot in basketball right there. Unselfish play. O'Connell now leading the way with 14 points. Good to see Diara back in the game for NC State as Hill is able to get him up in the air and finish. And Hill had a little bit of a quiet first half, but he's, he's come out and got two quick buckets and starting to get himself a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, he'll look to get going there. As with that basket, he is two of ten. Diara, oh! His second triple. And that one in front of the NC State bench has them fired up. Largest lead for the Wolfpack here at 15. Could have been the fourth on Burns. Instead, it's another Melora Brown offensive rebound, and he will be shooting when we come back. But how about the new fella, the Missouri transfer, Scott? Yeah, I could tell you probably when he came in, the first thing they weren't thinking was he's going to make, you know, two to three threes a game for him. But here he is. NC State with its largest lead of this ball game at 15. And well, look, year by year, the Wolfpack has always had to replace its leading scorer. Of course, Terquavion Smith last year at almost 18 points per game. And we don't know who the leading scorer is going to be. I think most, most people expected T to be the leading scorer last year. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously Jarkel, you know, was a good, you know, side man to that where they were kind of ham and egg things. I think this year the team's just a little bit different. Again, I think it's going to be a tough scout because you have no idea who's going to be that leading scorer. I mean, obviously everybody expects a DJ Burns to be that that guy, but I think he's going to get double teamed so much this year and they're going to try to get the ball out of his hands that someone else is going to have to step up. Laura Brown goes one of two. 
And Diora, who's knocked down a couple of threes, pulls in another rebound. He's got eight points now, 10 rebounds. So double-double watch for Mo Diora. There is the double-double on the feed from DJ Burns. Great pass, and he has such good patience. He takes his time and tries to figure out where that double team's coming from. He sees its baseline and makes the right play. NC State replacing leading scorers year over year. Trivia question as Morgan short on the three. The last NC State player to lead them in scoring back-to-back -back years. I know I, I spoiled this one for you pregame, Scott. I, I was just curious if you knew. It took you a while to get. I, I, my original guess was Cat Barber. Uh, and then I thought hard about TJ Warren. But then I realized TJ couldn't have done it. Um, and then eventually we got to CJ Leslie. CJ Leslie, a guy you played with, the last NC State player to lead them in scoring in back to back seasons. Playing with those three fouls. Double comes. Diara again. Not to be. There's Marcel, his first basket. And that's the effort you're always going to get out of Casey. He's always in there battling. Doesn't matter if he's not the biggest guy on the court, but just in there battling, gets the offensive rebound and finishes. He's the eighth player for NC State to score tonight. Again, he was the leading scorer in their exhibition. And again, it might be a different leading scorer every night. Tough move by Smith. That was pretty on the teardrop. I think Coach wants them to be a little bit higher on that switch. Again, especially when it's guard to guard, they always tell you to switch high. And that time, O'Connell was a little bit late, so he was able to get downhill and finish. Burns, Morcell, DJ Horn, three of the best candidates maybe to lead this team in scoring. Of course, this is their last year of eligibility, so they might have to. A tough, tough play here, and Melora Brown, right now they're playing four on five as he's just now getting to his feet on the other side. They might have to replace their leading scorer again. Double-double in your debut, Scott. That's big time from Mohamed Diara. Well, and obviously, I, I'm seeing him in practice, he just plays so hard. He does everything the right way. And again, I think because this guy right here is going to get so much attention, and a lot of double teams are going to come off Diara because they're going to think he's not as good of a shooter, he's going to have opportunities. Well, Coach Keith said that Diara was maybe their most consistent, maybe their best player in the offseason coming in. So this is not coming as a surprise to this Wolfpack staff. Uh, the type of game that he has put together here. Timeout, Citadel. NC State ballooning a lead to 18 points, and Mohamed Diara, a big part of that. Obviously, his scoring is rebounding as well, but look, he made four three pointers all season at Missouri last year. We've already seen him knock down two. I hate to tell you, there's something in PNC Arena that just brings out the shooters and everybody. <laughs> and he is knocking down shots. It also helps. All of these are coming off of paint touches. So they're getting the penetration. They're making the kick. And those are always the easiest ones for shooters, is to be able to get it inside out, contest late, knock it down. Good to see him shake off that lower body injury, come back in, knock down the three. And whether it is Diara or Burns, Middlebrooks, Parker, this is an NC State team that has more depth, particularly in the front court. Yeah. And that can maybe help to some of that inside out that you're talking about in those paint touches. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting, especially, you know, they've kind of gone to a two big lineup. So especially when they kind of play some smaller teams, if they're still going to kind of utilize that. So that's one of the things, especially going forward, are they going to be able to utilize a Diara and a DJ Burns at the same time? Both of these teams had five score in double figures in their exhibition. NC State, three in double figures. O'Connell and Burns with 14, Diara with 10. It's just A.J. Smith by his lonesome right now for the Citadel. Again, he's done most of his work at the line. 
I think especially if they're going to creep back, back into this game somehow. Madison Durr is going to have to get going, and they're going to have to start to get some defensive stops. NC State's got some really good looks. They've been patient and knocked down shots when they need to. All right, so out of the timeout, so it'll have one remaining. It's Smith. He's been cooking. Not this time. Nice little quick hitter. They got the pick and roll action. That's one of the things we talked about. Getting DJ Burns involved, especially on the defensive end, just missed the shot. Driving kick, Diora. Oh! Not the three on one end, but he gets the big block on the other. Horn a pull up, too strong. Hustle play. Diora kept it alive, but maybe a chance two on one. Roberts with an easy finish. And even though he missed the shot, he sprinted back, got the block on the one end, and almost got the offensive rebound. Those are the type of things, especially as coaches, you want to see. And then the Citadel took advantage of it, able to push it, made a good bounce pass, and finish on the offensive end. NC State playing a different lineup with Breon Pass now in alongside Horn. Late in the shot clock. Really good defensive possession there, and I think the Citadel, they've gone a little bit smaller, so I think DJ will have a little bit more advantage, but I think they're trying to create some havoc, especially on the defensive end, and create some mismatches uh, on the offensive end. Foul on Roberts will take us to our break. Mohamed Diara having an incredible debut with a double-double. Still seven-plus minutes to play. the ACC preseason poll. Duke, the preseason favorites for the eighth time in the last 11 years. NC State picked seventh in the preseason of the 15th team at ACC. But no players named preseason all ACC. That's a hard decision. You just haven't seen enough. I could tell you uh, Flipkowski would be a good safe pick, though. Yes. Yeah, but I think number 30 might have something to say about that. Of course, he was honorable mention last year. Looking to drop a dime there to Breon Pass. Instead, it's a turnover. Bulldogs trying to make something happen. It's Christian Moore in transition. And that's a great job by E.J. Smith, getting that paint touch. We've talked about it multiple times. The best shots come from that paint touch, and then makes the right play. Just the eighth NC State turnover. But this Senate will make them pay. DJ Horn off the ball screen, hesitation. It's just two for 11 tonight, the middle Brooks. Yeah, both Horn and Morsell struggling offensively. Durr had it taken away. Had a really good possession. They missed a couple threes. They got the turnover on this end, but again, I think Ben Middlebrooks is giving them some of that energy. Energy Very similar to Michael O'Connell. They're making the right plays. Again, nothing in the stat sheet may stand out, although O'Connell's you know, leading them in scoring and getting some assists, but it's one of those things that kind of goes unnoticed at times. Still some time left in this game, but one of the big takeaways so far, you know what you're getting with DJ Burns, but the other post, Diara and Middlebrooks. They are showing that they can be big contributors, and this is what NC State loves to do. Turn you over. Got to love it when you see a shooter on the rim. <laughs> you don't see it very often anymore, I feel like. Although I will say, I feel like the athletes are a little different than when I played. I don't know. You, you played with some great players and obviously against some great players as well yeah these training staffs man they're I don't know what they're pumping into some of these guys but they're just they're faster they're stronger they just look a little bit different than when I was running out there
This is where the Citadels really needs to get some stops, not give up an easy one and then get out in transition. Middlebrook spins baseline, runs into a wall of two defenders. Oh, it's more colliding with his teammate, Colby McAllister, who's seeing his first minutes. And Ends up being Wolfback basketball. O'Connell back on the floor for the first time in a while. <laughs> Seeing a lot of different lineups. <laughs> Taylor, the young man from Indianapolis. If you're from Indiana, you can shoot. Yeah. Perry Meridian, I believe, high school. Uh, I tell everybody, it's, it, I, I had the choice of being a, a shooter and play basketball, or, could, or I could farm, and I just wasn't cut out for that. That's really oh, look pass by Moore inside the hill for two. And that's really good movement. They just kept moving the ball, attacking. You know, Coach mentioned they want to see different lineups. They've got a little bit unique lineup on the court that we really haven't seen, and they're getting uh, some good defensive possessions and starting to really move the ball on the offensive end. Taylor knocking down that three in his NC State debut. He now has eight points. It's a big transition for him. Remember, he's from Indy. As Hill throws down the flush. He's from Indy and played at Butler. So coming to NC State, this is the furthest that he's ever been from home. It's definitely an adjustment. It's an adjustment for all these kids. How much of an adjustment was it for you? It was a lot. I was I was one of the lucky ones when my parents were, were there frequently. Uh, but again, all these freshmen got to go through that transition. They got to get used to the physicality. They got to get used to the speed. This will be the under four media timeout. Wolfpack leading by 15, but the Bulldogs, again, Winston it's some Hill. good passing. Winston Hill just does a good job sealing inside. Middlebrooks needs to push him outside that uh, uh, semicircle a little bit and a good finish. Back with Scott Wood, Andrew Sanders here. Look at the scores tonight for NC State. Three in double figures. And you look, it's four guys making their debut. Exciting stuff for NC State. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that we've mentioned. You know, obviously, NC State lost a lot of scoring. So who's going to fill that void? And I think tonight you're kind of seeing it. It's just going to be a team effort night in, night out. And you see DJ Horn back in his home city. Yes, two for 12. He struggled from the field. But I tell you what, he's got the six points. He also has six rebounds and four assists. He's had the ball in his hands a lot. He's done a lot. As Marcus Pegram glides to the rim. And he's also been very good defensively. I think that's one of the things, again, I haven't heard a lot of that on the defensive end, but he's guarded at a really high level tonight as well. First collegiate basket for Pegram, the freshman out of Whitney Young High School in Chicago, where they were city champs. Big to big, post to post, you bet. It's not, every, not very often you see a post to post pass from block to block and get the bucket. That's Moore kicks out, three ball, McAllister, no. Coach Conroy playing some of his freshmen here down the stretch. Moore sell. That's what he can do in transition. 41% last year, and he gets it to fall. I know he did not want to finish this game without making one, so I'm, it's going to set him up for a, for a good next game, that's for sure. At 78 last year, that's his first here this season. Tough move by Moore. How did he get that over the front of the rim? Nicely done. Great finish. Fouls. 
KYP, know your personnel. Knock down three-point shooter from the left wing, get it to him early so he can set his feet and knock it down. Casey Morsell, fan favorite here, organized a basketball camp over the summer. It's sold out. That's what a lot of these, you know, a lot of these players are starting to do a little bit more. They're starting to get a little bit more involved in the community. Um, I mean, honestly, all, all the kids, especially around the university, anywhere, love watching these kids. So anytime they can put something on, you know they're going to fill it up. He organized it all in about a month, and it honestly took him by surprise a little bit, he said, uh, that, that it sold out so quickly. And, and that took me by surprise a little bit. I think he maybe didn't understand the, the impact that he's maybe had in the community. And like you said, the number of kids that want that kind of experience. Especially anytime somebody like him is, is high level. That's kids want to learn. They want to be around them, ask them questions, whether they're silly questions or basketball questions. So good for him to kind of get back in the community and have one of those camps. And he said it was a great experience. He, he would definitely do it again. He had Torin Dorn, who was a great player at NC State, come and be a motivational speaker. Torn's one of the good ones, too. I think he's out with the, uh, I want to say Salt Lake City. Uh, the developmental team was on staff with State um, last year and has, has since then moved uh, out west. Official review here, under two minutes to play. Ball was knocked out of bounds, and who touched it last? I'm going off the Wolfpack. Yes. That one is conclusive. I am one for one for my career. Just saying. <laughs> Shooting a thousand. 300 gets you in the Hall of Fame. Are we talking baseball now? Yeah. I wish Trey Turner would have been able to pull it out. I enjoyed watching that Phillies run, but it was good to see. I, I enjoyed Texas. I really did. Take another look. I'm going to tell NC State women's basketball head coach Wes Moore you said that. Big Texas Rangers fan. Celebrated that one. Just got a good roster. But yeah, you were at NC State during that time with Trey Turner, Carlos yeah. Rodon. Yeah. Brett Austin. Really good group. Made the College World Series back in 2013. Citadel also did it back in the early 90s with their current baseball coach, Tony Skoll. Also, Louisville head coach Dan McDonald and Mississippi State head coach Chris Limonis. They all were in school at the same time with Coach Conroy. And that'll be a shot clock violation. You make a baseball reference. You didn't know we were going to talk baseball like that. Citadel, great tie-in. All right, let's look upcoming schedule for NC State. Friday night, Abilene Christian right here on the ACC Network Extra. And then Charleston Southern before they get Vandy out in Vegas over Thanksgiving. Yeah, a few matchups. They're going to have to try and figure out kind of kind of what they have. And then once they really get in towards the, the end of November, it's going to be a it's going to be a tough lineup. Couple of subs for NC State, LJ Thomas. And Ernest Ross seeing their first minutes here with a minute 21 left to go. Along with Parker, Morcell, and Taylor. <laughs> Traveling violation on Taylor. Gonna say anytime you can shake three guys, you gotta be doing something that doesn't that doesn't work. Split two defenders. Breon pass for replace Taylor. Nine points, three rebounds, and an assist in his Wolfpack debut. What the Callister, tough drive. And Wolfpack still getting after it defensively, though. And murmurs amongst the fans because 
There is for NC State fans that are familiar with the uh, chicken promotion. It's back this year. Missed two free throws, free chicken for everybody in attendance. I've got two kids. I could use it. Colby McAllister. He was a perfect 12 for 12 last year from the strike. Well, he's not the candidate you would think would miss both. Uh, I would say typically a good shooter, the hardest one to make is the first one. And then once you get a feel for the ball, especially if you haven't been in the game much, second one's a little easier, but he also does have a roaring crowd and a bunch of substitutions to freeze them and ice them out. KJ Keats, Alex Nunley, and Jordan Snell all into the game for NC State. Gladys has been all day. Free chicken. Possession arrow going the way of the Bulldogs. Well, Levi Burkholz into this game along with Quinn Nielsen. Both of them making their collegiate debuts. It'll be Pegram shooting here. And McAllister's got to be saying, why aren't they yelling as loudly for him as they were for me? Yeah, I don't think they can double up on the chicken. I think See? that's that should be an, that should be something they should implement. If we get two of them, double chicken. Sounds good to me. One for each kid. Big rebound there, Tony Carfio. I will say the one thing, especially with the Citadel, I think they've got some really good pieces. I think obviously they're a little bit younger ball club mixed in with some, you know, upperclassmen. But I think this is something that coach wanted to see. He wanted to get everybody some minutes, kind of figure out what he's got, especially over these next few games before they really get into the, you know, bulk of their schedule, kind of figure out what pieces he has in place. So I think, you know, even though the score may not show it, I think they did some things well. I think they still got to handle some pressure, um, but they, they brought it tonight. They had some good energy and the same thing on the other. And I think Coach Keats saw some guys really step up. I think he's going to realize that, you know, he's got five or six that could easily lead this team each night, and it's just going to make it a tough scout for other opponents. This is Alex Nunnally. Clock off. The nice pass. pass. Carpio with the flush on the dish by yeah, Levi yeah, Burkholz. So the Bulldogs end it on a high note. Thomas will dribble it out. And NC State 1 and 0 oh in this new year as they take it 72 to 59. The final score. The Wolfpack has won 29 of its last 30 season openers against non-conference opponents, and under Coach Keats, they have been really good, 44 and 2 overall. Scott, your thoughts on this one? You know, I think very similar to what I said earlier. I think you know Coach Keats was able to see some things. I think they've got a little bit deeper roster than what they've had in years past, and the same thing with the Citadel. I mean, it's easy to get down on a loss, but they've got some really good pieces in place go, going forward. Six players make their Wolfpack debut tonight. Michael O'Connell, 14 points. Mo Diara, 10 points, 14 rebounds, but it's DJ Burns who leads them in scoring with 16 as NC State defeats the Bulldogs. 72-59, the final score. For our great crew here in Raleigh and my partner Scott Wood, I'm Andrew Sanders. Good night.